Today on All Out Brick, we're going to be taking a look at Bionicle Set 8557, the Exotoa. We're going to build it, review it, and then give out a score. Let's get started. everyone, I'm Christian from All Out Brick. Welcome to another Matsunui Monday. As always, the best way to tag along with us every week is to subscribe and turn on notifications. This week, we're going to be looking at set 8557, the Exotoa. This was released as a part of the 2002 Bionicle line. The Exotoa was essentially an Iron Man suit for the Toa. A Toa can choose to pilot the mech, which grants them new explosive attacks and armor for fighting off more viable enemies. However, in the 2002 storyline, the Toa basically hopped in the suits, fired off one attack on the Barag Queens, and then decided that they were hindering their elemental powers, so they just threw them aside. The front of the box really shakes things up. I know normally we are used to seeing a Pokoro background here, but the Exotoa is definitely in a cavern beneath the island of Matanui. Really great picture, low angle shot on the front. Ages 9 plus and the Bionicle logo in the top left corner. The top of the box is the same as the Boxer. It just shows this advertisement for Bionicle.com, new layout, and a couple new games on there and stuff like that. The back of the box is really quite interesting, and I have a couple questions going on here. Obviously, we have some pictures of the different functions that the Exotoa suit can perform. There's the other model in the bottom right corner of the box. However, in the bottom left, we see a Toa Nuva sitting in the Exotoa. Now, I know this set actually released before the Toa Nuva came out. So is this version of the box that I have just from a later print date or something like that? Or did they just kind of sneak peek the Toa Nuva that were going to come out later that year? Inside, we received three bags along with the two instruction booklets, one for each model. And then there's some advertisement material as always. Just like the boxer, the Exotoa has two build variations. So what we'll do is we'll just build one and review one one at a time. Let's go ahead and get started with the first model build. For this variation of the Exo Toa, which in my mind, this is like the iconic version of it, the build was 45 minutes total. And what we get here is super impressive, right? We got a lot of detail going on in this model. It stands pretty tall. It's a lot bigger than a Toa. Like I said, it's like an Iron Man suit for the Toa. And I really like the color design that they gave us here. There's a bunch of silver accents and the dark gray orange kind of mimics that boxer color scheme. But with that silver accent, this really makes it feel like it's something special. And to me, that really comes off after building the set of like dang like the toa really could use this upgrade there's a lot of posability that you can do too although this is a double-edged sword you know the arms they connect like toa ball joints and you can move them around really anywhere and pose them however you want however the legs which include a lot of posability doesn't really add up like you can't really bend the legs and display it in another way it's just the way that the center of gravity works on this model you really can't move the legs like if they hinged at the knees as well as the hips they hinge at the hips if they could hinge at the knees then it'd be a different story but only hinging at the hips it's good for playing like you could twist them while you're playing with it but you really can't stand it any differently other than just moving the arms but speaking of the arms I really like that they switched it up. Like on the right arm, we have this like little pincer that if you push something in, the hooks extend out and come back in. This is basically what the boxer does and it would be very useful for attacking the bow rock or not, not just the bow rock. It obviously would deal a bunch of damage, but certainly those hooks are very helpful for attacking bow rock swarms. And on the left side, we have this like missile launcher, definitely an upgrade for the Toa. Get this kind of explosive thing. I'm not sure if they have like ammo for this. I'm not sure how it works. Like it comes with one. So like once they fire it off, is, does it work like Hawkeye's like arrows? Do they just like infinitely just keep pulling them out? Or I don't know. That's a pretty good question I have that I don't think it would ever get answered. The big benefit of this set is that you're able to put a Toa inside of it. This is actually a hard process. This was, I, I'm, I wish it was easier. The pop open function is really fantastic. That like opens the suit up and says like, jump on in. It definitely like, it's not a function where you look at it and you're like, oh, you gotta put the Toa in. Like it almost feels like the machine is like, this is actually how they'd get in. You're not squeezing them in. And I think a lot of the times when there's sets like this, you're just kind of jamming the figure in and it's not like working how like a real suit like this would work. In this case, 
that's not true. It is tough to get them in though. Um, you have to fiddle with it for a couple minutes until they get securely in there. But once you get that Toa inside, it looks so good. It looks so good. Like you can just tell, it's like, oh man, like if you thought the Toa were good before, <sighs> But like we found out in the comics, it does kind of pinch down on their elemental powers, but being able to use this in battle, obviously in the 2002 storyline, we only got to see it once. I'm pretty sure in 2003, we come back to this small spoiler alert, but for the time being what we got here, I mean, you think about like the Rahi, could you imagine if they had this against the Rahi? They would have taken them apart. Like it would have been a joke. This is, I don't even know if they would have had to turn into the Kaita to be able to defeat the Manas. That would be a good fight. Four Toa and Exo Toa armor versus like a Manas crabs. Anyone can do some animation out there. Hard to put the Toa in or not. This is still a fantastic version of the Exo Toa. I'm really excited to get into the second one, but overall, just my thoughts on this one here, you know, I, I it feels, kind of perfect it does like it just feels like this is exactly what the toa need it just something to beef them up without like change them obviously the toa nuva are going to go change them but for what we got right now with this man like it's i would can't imagine being like a kid and seeing this coming out for the first time just excellent job here what we're going to do is we're going to have to take this thing apart, however, because we have to build a second variation of the Exo Toa. Let's go ahead and get started with that. Build number two is now done. It took 35 minutes to build this one, a little bit quicker than the original model, model one. And I, this one actually took longer than I thought it would because it didn't include nearly as many pieces. It probably only used like one half of the pieces, maybe two thirds of the pieces, but it still took 35 minutes. The other one was 45 minutes. First thing I noticed on this model is that it's more poseable in terms of the feet. Yeah, there's not as many stuff going on because of the arms and everything, but the feet are definitely more poseable. It's a really cool looking vehicle. And there's some nice details in here, nowhere near, as much as the level of the original Exotoa model, but as a second build, it does its job for me. It's just, it gives it variety. Unfortunately, it doesn't include as many great features or like playable features. However, it's much easier to lock a Toa into place. If you think about when we did the boxer review, the second model was way easier to lock the Matoran into place. This is kind of the same thing. The, this was much easier system to mount the Toa. Obviously, this is a completely different style of build, so I guess it's not right to compare one to the other. Something else with the Toa that I noticed is that this doesn't feel like it would strip their elemental powers as much. That was a big issue with the first model and is actually why in the story they kind of tossed them aside to defeat the Balrog Queens is that they were saying that the suit was stripping them of their armor. It was kind of like restricting it. This doesn't really feel like that at all. It feels like when a Toa is sitting in there, they're free to use their elemental powers. Their arms are completely free. It's kind of just their legs locked in place. And then the main thing with this model, the feature wise, is there's this blaster on the bottom and it's kind of poseable. It can't rotate left and right, but you can aim up and down with it. And the way that it's mounted, it's just like something I didn't expect. Like I knew that it was on the bottom. I was like, ah, it's probably just like you shoot from the bottom and tilt the legs to shoot. No, it's actually pretty, pretty nice there because in order to kind of shoot, like I guess up or straight, you have to tilt this model way back and then you can just kind of aim up and down. I enjoyed that part of it. Like I said earlier, it only uses like one half to two thirds of the pieces. And this actually brings me to my only complaint with this variation of the model is that these front arms are not posable. They're posable, but they're not like actionable. They don't perform a very good function. With the Exotoa suit for the first model, we saw that you could kind of like push on it and it would clamp down and kind of spring back and forth to be able to dislodge like a Bovox mask or something like that. I don't know why they didn't do that for this because there's so many extra pieces and there's no rubber bands. Oh, there's one rubber band used in this model, but there's none of the rubber bands that would be able to perform that function of springing back and forward. I don't know why they didn't include it. My first guess is that it was putting a lot of weight in the front of the model and kind of screwed up like the, like the gravitational center of the model. I don't, I feel like that's fixable though. So maybe someone has done a mod where it is like springable like that. But again, this is just the side model to the Exo Toa set. It does its job. It's a really neat thing to kind of shake it up. If you have two of these sets, which I mean, nowadays it's going to 
cost <laughs> a good amount. But if you had two of these sets, I could totally see why you would want one and the other. This is like kind of like a nice little vehicle to come marching on in and like fire off some shots and the Toa could kind of like command from the top of there and do some elemental power stuff. But the Exo Toa suit is completely different. I like it. It really reminds me of the Boxer, right? We had like the first build was like that iconic thing and the second one was kind of like, eh, this really reminds me of the boxer heck even the color scheme looks just like the boxer set and i'm sure that was intentional uh i like it you know i'm sure some people would say i'd rather have it more color i think the orange provides enough color and then it really just looks like a machined vehicle for the boxer but now that i think about it this is pretty much the toa's version of the boxer right with the boxer the matoran were then able to fight some bow rock now the toa could fight really powerful enemies such as the bara queens or the bow rock swarm so this is pretty much the toa's boxer i like that coordination for the year line is that they kind of mesh together very well and i imagine that like where well, where were these things when we see like in 2003 the threats these probably would have been pretty useful or the exo toa suits might have been pretty useful I'm sure we'll see them later on overall for this set though really great impression i think it was definitely towards that upper tier of sets we've done so far it's not like functionalized it's not like super poseable or anything like that either of them but they're they feel like they would be a ton of fun to play with and they definitely give the toa some much needed upgrades to kind of progress the storyline a bit more price wise what you're going to look at for the exo toa set for used it's kind of like i think it's around like 60 dollars used but for brand new you're going to be shelling out a pretty penny it's like 150 dollars plus new i think on bricklink it might even be more right now for brand new sealed that being said i don't see any reason to go brand new on this set i would be completely fine with a used one you know don't spend the extra money for new you could get two for the price of one actually you could get like two or to three for the price of one so that's kind of a no-brainer there. As for a score, I'm going to give the Exo Toa set an 8.5. Great impression to me. It feels like something that you definitely would want to have as a part of like your Bionicle like collection. Or if you're getting into Bionicle, this is totally something you would want to get after you get the Toa, of course. Definitely don't get these before the Toa. I, I, they don't serve any use at all if you get them before the Toa. So make sure you have the Toa then yeah, the, put these towards your priority list, kind of like the Boxer. Very similar to the Boxer, but I notched up a little bit above the Boxer because it just feels like more substantial than the Boxer and a little bit more iconic in my mind. So 8.5, that's your review. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to be the first to see all of our future content. Also, be sure to check us out on our website and on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Until next time, stay bricking.